Okay, well, I, I'll go jump into uh, Grasshopper. Uh, so for, we're not going to too much into, we're not going to go deeply into Grasshopper. I'm just going to talk about Grasshopper a little bit. So I'm going to get out of this editor. So I've set up, let me load a new file. Okay, what I, what I have here on the right side, for those of you who are familiar with Grasshopper, you know what this is, but those of you who are not. So this is actually the Grasshopper programming interface and you can, uh, you can access this by going to tools and going to Grasshopper or just typing in Grasshopper in the command window in Rhino. Uh, and you can set up, uh, you know, different nodes or widgets here and you can programmatically uh, set these up so the input of output of one widget goes into the out, input of the other and so on. So what I've done here is I've set up three nodes or three widgets, if you will. One I'm calling it CAD. Uh, and uh, and then uh, its input to this is a drop down list, uh, a drop down control. So basically, there's uh, you know five different values in this drop down control that the user can use. Uh, so so basically, you can think of it. I'm kind of simulating the parametric design uh, part of it. So and this CAD component, what it does is it takes this input. This um, drop-down input, which can either be 2 th through 2.5, 3, 3.5, or 4, and creates a, uh, creates a circle, a very simple circle. So let me bring up the file. So this is actually, a, this component actually is um, what's called a, a GH, uh, a, a, you know, Python script using the Rhino uh, API. So it basically, if you look at the, uh, the code here, uh, you see this variable called radius in this uh, node, and that's what we get. That's the input to this. So we're assigning a radius and creating a circle. And then we're adding that circle into the Rhino database. And then uh, we, are, we are getting the, the ID of that circle and assigning it to this variable called jam, which is nothing but jam here. This jam that shows here. So close let me do that so this jump uh, I don't know what that is doing okay so now let's look at that that geometry output is then passed into this cam component and let's look at what cam component does so this one uses the RhinoCam SDK so basically it pulls in the geometry which is in this case is going to be a, a circle and then it creates a two and a half axis uh, pocketing operation uh, mill tool creates a mill tool and then it populates the uh, the operation with that selected geometry which in this case would be the the circle and then it regenerates the operation and then once that's done it's going to post it using a post let's see what this one does so that operation is sent in as input to this widget and then this one takes uh, and creates a post using a post process selects a post and does a post processing operation as I mentioned before, it's always a good idea to keep these two panels uh, side by side like this, so you're uh, showing uh, you know what you're doing. So let me let me show how this whole sequence works. So if, as part of a parametric design, let's say you're creating a a circle of three three radius radius is three inches. So it it, it went through these components and created the toolpath and posted the output out. So and it also created the toolpath here. So now I let, let me say I want to do a, a four inch circle. So this, I shouldn't have selected that. So let me delete that. So I got deselect everything. I'll do that four inch. Uh, let me do a 3.5, there you go. Deselect, Let's do a two. So as you can see, this this is how now we got parametric machining, if you will. So I'm basically creating these circles parametrically by just creating, you know, inputting these parameters for radius. It's a very simple example, obviously, but then you can set up any complicated relationships in the back back end for to design more complicated shapes, and then you can drive it to something like this, where creating the geometry, and then you pushing the geometry into our CAM component, and then finally posting it out. So this is a quick example of what you can do uh, using Grasshopper 
not only to take the power of the rhino part, but you can also use the SDK uh, as well as the, uh, the posting capabilities in our SDK to create different components. And there's uh, other things you can do here. You can, uh, you know, load files. You can, in fact, in, in our, uh, in our company, what we do is we do regression testing using uh, Grasshopper. So basically we load files, uh, all the test files that we have, we load files automatically and regenerate the operations that they have. Uh, we load knowledge bases automatically and, and regenerate and then check the output. So that kind of level of automation, you can also implement in your shop uh, based on the kind of parametric designs that you're working with. Hope that makes sense. Uh, do yep. we have any questions? Nope. Nope. We're all done with questions. Okay. That's interesting because this is the most complicated part. So maybe it's a, uh, people need some time to digest this. So, okay. But we are always open to questions. Uh, uh, you can always drop them uh, in our support at mixup.com and uh, we'll, we'll try to get, get to those questions.